Hi, I'm Walt Garrison, and welcome to the Cowgirl Checks on RFD. I could stand here and do it all day. It's scary. It's stuff that's tabooed, you know, to most people that come to rodeos. And Rodeo's a sport. We know that. But you have to have a show, and voila, all American cowgirl chicks put on the show. Come on, girls, that's right. Usually our horses run about 35 to 40 miles an hour. It's dangerous, and these ladies will take some chances tonight. This is reality television here. It'll be interesting. We'll get up close and personal. Don't look at my feet. <laughs> And that's one thing that I'm really proud of RFD TV is they stand behind the youth and they want them to be strong Americans and it starts with rodeo. God bless America and our heroes tonight. Welcome to the All American Cowgirl Chick Show here in Weatherford, Texas at the Cowgirl Chick Ranch. I'm gonna try it on the front side. Okay. I you can do it. Today, we've got two special guests, our trick riding coach, J.W. Stoker. Flip that knee over. And legendary hero, not only in the football world, but the rodeo industry as well, Mr. Walt Garrison. People don't understand the athleticism that, uh, that it takes to be a trick rider. You know, they have to have strength, they have to have agility, they have to have balance, uh, and they have to have determination, And because they practice a lot. We try to ride every day. Let go on the back side if you can, Hattie. Hey, hey. Let go, Hattie. Yeah. yeah okay. Good job. All right. We'll end it with a hippodrome, and then we'll get to Roman riding. You can do a little bit of that, and then we'll get to cooking. How's that? <laughs> Walt Garrison is here to do some chilling and grilling with the cowgirl chicks. He brought his very own personal chef, Terry. And it's ready to go. But I also have chicken breast that we can actually cook if you want to. That would be great. They've got their awesome cowboy ranch rub. They've got their homemade sauces and their famous barbecue sauce. Can, can you get pick. chips in that? Yeah, yeah everything. He's yeah, you can, <laughs> you can, yeah, you you can, can do whatever you but want But you know what? Bread, just like the Italian bread or butter. Oh, oh yeah. You know, that, would, that would probably be good on a, a but it's But it is better warm. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a little better warm than it is. Uh, just mm. cold, but it's good. Oh, but no, it's good. It's good. Chill and grill for the cowgirl chicks. You don't want to miss it. We got some great cowboy stories for you. So don't go away. The cowgirl chicks will be right back. So tell us what you think. <laughs> Better be good. I'm not even going to spit this snuff out. <laughs> you know, folks have always been amazed about what I can put in a bottle. Like this and this. My cowboy's cowboy barbecue sauce, salsa, and rub. Bottled up inside is the bold taste of Texas. Rich and full of flavor. So pick up a bottle and just put a piece between your cheek and gum. Or even better, fill up your whole mouth. Walt Garrison's Cowboys Cowboy Products. Look for them at your favorite grocery store. Check out the Cowgirl Chick store at www.cowgirlchicks.com. The Cowgirl Chicks have their very own country music, cool posters, Cowgirl Chick t-shirts, and bling bling jewelry. Tack and rodeo equipment for every cowgirl in the equestrian business. Our very own horse hair extensions, made by Gypsy Tails. You're gonna join the Cowgirl Chicks. I would tell you to hold on really tight because it's gonna be a rough ride. Hey! 
And you thought bulldogging was tough, huh? It's not a sport for sissies. Well, it takes a person that's got some nerve, wants to get ahead. Better. And uh, wants to please people. It's a crowd pleaser, you know. The crowd always uh, likes the girls and likes the trick bag. Ladies and gentlemen, can you believe? Probably trick riding was uh, more part of rodeo years ago than it is now, and I wish, you know, it was uh, bigger now, you know. I know Cheyenne, they still have uh, trick riding down the, down the track in front of the grandstands. It used to be if you worked the rodeo, the trick riding was the thing. Every girl in that audience, little girl, wanted to be a trick rider because they wore the fancy clothes, and they rode fast horses, and they rode pretty horses, and that's what everybody would love. But that's got to be a thing of the past now, pretty much, you know. Um, I actually just started trick riding today. Flip that knee over. The hardest part, get, get up in the saddle again. Now when you come down, get both hands on the horn. Okay. Flip this up, keep your foot in there, and roll right over, right over the top of it. There. Okay, now come up. When you first learn it, that ridge is going to make you sore, so if you put a twist in your stirrup. Yes, sir. Here. Come in from the wrong side. Now try it. Don't put your foot in too far. There you go. See how much easier and smoother? OK, yes, now come up. It's really great to be around somebody like uh, JW and, and that he cares so much for the, for the younger trick riders and trick ropers coming up. You don't want to wear cowboy boots with the heels on them because you've got to have that ankle support. With the boot heel, you got a tendency for your ankle to turn. And you can't land on the ball of your foot as easy because that heel is going to take over. It'd be the first thing to hit. And that doesn't give you too good a lift, really. But if you're doing just the shoulder stand or a trick where you're upside down, you don't touch the ground, you can get by with boots, you know. Makes it look more Western, but it's only for photography. <laughs> Not for the show. Want to try it? Just be careful and think what you're doing. Okay. I'll catch you here if you have a problem. Um, yes, my first try went pretty good. I was really scared. I was nervous because at first I thought I was just going to be standing still and just doing it on the horse. And then JW is like, well, let's make a run. And I was, I don't know, I was really nervous. All right, so both hands on the horn when I yep. get, after I get around the curve right there. Now, don't do anything until you start coming in straight. OK, so when do you want me to start in my trick? You want me to start, like, back there? Um, I got scared my heart. I thought it was going to jump out of my chest. OK. Good. OK, come up. That was good for the first trip. It went pretty good. I didn't, I didn't fall off and I didn't get hung. I didn't do anything wrong, so. Well, I've known uh, J.W. Stoker for, oh gosh, uh, probably 40 years. You've got to entertain the kids. If the kids are entertained and they want to go to the rodeo, the family goes. If there's nothing for the kids, they aren't going to hire a babysitter and go to the rodeo by themselves. So by not having acts, They've just cut their own throat. Show how young I am. <laughs> I was singing the anthem. <laughs> Mr. Stoker was trick roper and... Was I bulldogging? Yes, sir. But I've, actually, you were team roping with Billy Minnick. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, one of the great innovators in, in not only trick roping, but especially trick riding, you know, and he's, uh, uh, he's a legend. <laughs> Sloppy. Can't be a cook and a rope for both, I guess. Yeah, he puts his all in it, and he's 83 years old and still is going, and I'm hoping that one day I can do the same. The best rodeo I ever worked was in 1939 in Chicago Stadium. Buck Jones was the guest star. They had the best group of adult trick riders you've ever seen. Buff Brady was one. Georgia Sweet Gillum went under the belly, straight trooper to a shoulder stand, buff dead. That's just unbelievable. What are you going to do, Hattie? I Pick up your feet. Yeah. 
forget about that. Do a Stroud. I listen to him out there a while ago, you know, and, and he can tell them little things that en enhance their performance. I pull, you, pull yourself up and get more in a straight line. He doesn't have to come out here in the rain or come out here in the cold or the hot. Or... Good. You know, it, it doesn't matter to him. He's here. He's dependable. He's always thinking about what's best for us. You can touch the ground if you want and it'll sling you. He's been very loyal to the team, very loyal to the family. Uh, always helps me out whenever I need it. No matter what question I ask him, he, he gives me the correct answer. He's out for my safety as well as the horse's safety and all the rest of the girls. Um, he cares about what we do and you can't repay him for that at all. Can you flip over the neck and do him? I'm learning it. I'm not there yet. Okay, let's not do that today then. But okay. Just do it the easiest way for you to split the neck, whichever is easiest. Then you land, and then I land here, and then pull myself back. Yeah. Is that the way you want me to go? Yeah, whatever way you've been doing it. Whatever JW says, do it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Do you believe in me? Yeah. You're watching RFD TV with the All American Cowgirl Chicks. On this team, we're all united in a common goal to give our best and to keep our job. Are you ready to be an All-American Cowgirl Chick? You and your horse will experience performing at rodeos, theme parks, fairs across the country. Appear on national television. Share your experience and knowledge mentoring the youth on rodeo. Receive extensive training in horsemanship, showmanship in the rodeo arena today. Come on, auditions coming in 2012. For more information for requirements, contact Trish Lynn at cowgirlchicks.com. Hold on, you're in for a great ride. What is it? Don't do it till you get around the turn now. <laughs> this one kind of scares me just because if they do fall like we were talking about, you're SOL. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah, I'm fixing to say. And, uh... Hey, you got it. Very good. Come up. Good job. That was good. All right. That was great. Then I want you to do the next run, go around the horn, vault. Go around the horn, vault, and then just go around the horn on the turn and then do a vault. So two volts, spin. So you see what he does to me? <laughs> and I always think, oh, you know, I can't do that trick. He's like, oh, no, come on, just try it. Do this, this, and that. Oh, right. you can do it. Uh, Gives me a little bit of hope in myself that I can, you know, maybe accomplish some of my dreams. Land forward. There you go. Good. Woo! I did it! <laughs> That's why I come out every week and practice with them every chance I get, you know, because they're willing to learn and they do good, and I know that's what the public wants to see. Yeah, that's good. That there's no way I would be where I'm at today myself without him, and the team would not be what we are without Mr. Stoker. We watched him go through, you know, his hard times in and out of the hospital, and uh, he means a lot, and uh, we'd be nowhere without him. I see lots of glamour. I see girls that are really enjoying themselves. They're learning to be good horsemen, and more than one of them are good horsemen, you know. They're not just average girls by any means. And it's something that every girl in that audience would love to be doing themselves. Today we have Mr. Walt Garrison out here. He is going to cook for us and we just showed him what we do in the rodeo and this is a wonderful opportunity for us to have him out here. We can't, we still can't believe he's here. In fact, he's really what you call a cowboy. He was a cowboy football player. He was a cowboy in the rodeo arena and uh, he's just a cowboy. He was Louisville Farmer. So 
A fighting, a fighting farmer. A fighting farmer from Louisville. That's where he played high school football. And then he went to Oklahoma State and he was a cowboy. Then he got drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. And then he went on the pro rodeo circuit, uh, steer wrestling, and he was the true cowboy. I always said if I could have made the same amount of money rodeoing, I would have rather done that, but I wasn't that good, so. Uh, he wasn't uh, some football player that, you know, was really high on himself or anything like that. He was very down to earth. Come over here and help us breathe this smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I got a saddle older than y'all. And Mr. Stoker being here at the same time with him, it was really cool because you were around two legendary people. When we played home games, we, we all stayed at the hotel on Saturday night in Dallas, and then we'd uh, uh, go to the game the next day, you know. And, and, uh, but I would leave. We had to have a team meal. We had a team meal at 5 o'clock. And then the married guys would go home, and I'd get in my car and go to Mansfield to the rodeo, and I'd enter the Bulldog, and where I could get up during the rodeo, and uh, then I'd come back by the 11 o'clock cur curfew. And uh, somebody called Coach Landry and said, boy, we think that is really good that you let Walt come over here and Bulldog night for a game. So I get a call the next morning <laughs> <laughs> from Coach Landry, and he said, uh, don't do that during the season, you know. Him even saying that he still, you know, goes to jackpots and ropes and does all these things still riding horses was just awesome. Uh, yeah, I still enjoy riding. Uh, I enjoy it. It's uh, pretty relaxing to me, you know, and I enjoy roping. And he was a Dallas Cowboy. You know, I was drafted by the Cowboys, so they sent uh, Gil Brandt, who was the player personnel director at that time, and he came up to Oklahoma State, and uh, so they offered me a ton of money. I mean, they offered me like $15,000, you know. And I thought, what the hell am I going to do with all this money, you know? And a new Pontiac Grand Prix. Oh, my God. And I said, uh, they said, uh, and that's all it is. I said, no, I said, I'll tell you what I want. And they said, what? I said, I want a two-horse inline trailer. And Gil Brandt gets this funny look on his face, and he said, what is that? <laughs> I said, Macquarie makes the best one, and it's in yeah. Fort Worth. And they said, what does it, what it cost? I said, I don't know. $2,500, $3,000, $3,500, I don't know. And he said, excuse me. So he went up and I found out later, he went and called Tex Schramm, who's the general manager. He wow. said, this idiot wants a horse trailer. <laughs> and, and Tex, of course, said, what does it cost? He said, I don't know, three or 4000 He said, well, give it to him then. That is so, so and awesome. I probably wouldn't have signed. And I've still got the trailer. Do you really? I was going to ask that. I don't pull it anymore. They come out with goosenecks, which right. felt a lot easier. But uh, uh, yeah, I've still got it under a shed. Out that there is a house. cool, cool story. <laughs> so how'd you get involved in cooking? You know, folks have always been amazed about what I can put in a bottle. Like this and this. My Cowboys Cowboy barbecue sauce, salsa, and rub. Bottled up inside is the bold taste of Texas rich and full of flavor. So pick up a bottle and just put a piece between your cheek and gum. Or even better, fill up your whole mouth. Walt Garrison's Cowboys Cowboy Products. Look for them at your favorite grocery store. Check out the Cowgirl Chick store at www.cowgirlchicks.com. The Cowgirl Chicks have their very own country music cool posters, cowgirl chick t-shirts, and bling bling jewelry, tack and rodeo equipment for every cowgirl in the equestrian business, our very own horse hair extensions made by Gypsy Tails. Walt Garrison has the best barbecue sauce, so that's what I know for sure. This is our barbecue sauce, and it's the last thing we're going to do before this meat's ready. We're going to burn this sauce on it just a bit, just to give it that barbecue taste. Well, like I said, I put it on scrambled eggs, you know. Most rub recipes are basically alike. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a lot of the same ingredients in them. And, uh, and, and I got a recipe, I don't know, 35, 40 years ago, and I've changed it over the years. And like you said, it's more spicy because I like mine a little spicier. You know, right. some people don't, but I do. And, and so uh, we've changed it up a little. It's great. And this chicken, today's cooking is just, uh, 
It's just got rub on it. What is the key to cooking chicken and to making it moist? Don't overcook it. Okay. People do too. People make two mistakes on chicken and pork. They overcook it and it dries it out. Right. You can't never get the juices back in it. Right, exactly. And you keep moving it. That's the one I, thing I've noticed. You keep rolling I keep, it. keep rolling it over, um, especially on an open flame. Now, if I'm on a, if I'm on a grill, I'm going to let it sit longer on one side because i got even heat. Right. But if I'm on an open flame like this, I'm going to keep, gonna keep rolling. rolling That's, where, that's yeah. where I make my mistake in because I always leave it too long, I guess, on that one side in my open fire. Yeah. So, and that's what I've been watching, and you've just steady been rolling. And that's, what yeah. I, that's what I haven't been doing right. Yeah. That looks delicious. Oh, and, keep, and, and you want to keep oil on it because yes, the oil sir. keeps uh, searing in those juices. Okay. This will be the most moist chicken you probably have you ever eaten. You paint it after you get it on here. You uh, paint it. Keep uh, painting. I keep painting it. it. Okay. Because yeah, every time you roll it, it's going it's to sear that ju or burn that juice off of okay. it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. That's that's good to know because I mess up my chicken all the time. Well, chicken's hard to cook, and most people overcook it and dry it out, and they can't figure it out. But or they try to cook it too fast. And you don't want to, you don't want to cook chicken more than 160 degrees, mm -hmm. or it is, it, it is, it's dry and no good. Oh, this looks awesome. Yeah, we're almost done here. So you've got no, not only your ranch rub, but tell us about your salsas. I've got a 99-year-old grandmother who's been cooking our salsas for more than 50 years, and she got the recipe from her mother who had cooked it for more than 50 years. So it's a, it's a, uh, it's an it's old, been in the it's been in the family a long time, and she's her name is Hazel Terry. She's an East Texas farm girl, still a still doing really well really healthy every time i go down to to the farm she cooks me fried chicken and she still cooks these sauces that yeah. is awesome yeah potato salad and his ranch rub is around the rim what else are y'all having? I mean, Walt Garrison's ranch rub is not only in the chicken, it's in the skillet it's potatoes. In the potatoes. It's in our potato salad. We've used it in everything. It's absolutely delicious. And <laughs> folks, I tell you what, if you're going to have family home from the holidays, this is a great recipe. Everybody loves to cook out. But you don't want to miss out on all these seasonings. He's got a great variety. WaltGarrisonFoods.com, folks. You heard it right here from Walt's personal chef, Terry. And it looks like we're just about finished. We're almost finished. We're going to let those onions cook just about a minute more, and then we're done. Really good. My kind of food. Where'd they all come from? I'm about through my first plate. So yeah, I'll cook you some. I'll cook you some good brisket one of these days. See what you did? See what you did? <laughs> and then the cowgirl chicks, we're going to end it with good dessert that you're going to take back and you, you might like it. All right. Yeah, but, huh? You like that? <laughs> <laughs> that may have been the worst thing I've ever had. <laughs> I'm not a cook. This, it, this was in the sun too long. This is due to it. <laughs> It's a turd. It's a hot turd. <laughs> That's the worst thing I've ever had. That's the worst thing? Okay. I burnt the chocolate last night in the microwave. <laughs> okay. Darn. 24 years just burned this. <laughs> and I'm sorry, Chris, and I'm really sorry. I messed up the Oreo balls. Thanks so much for joining us at the Cowgirl Chick Show. We had such a blast with Walt Garrison. What a true hero, not only to the football industry, but to the rodeo world. And also, our trick riding coach, J.W. Stoker. Hope to see you down the road. Take care. Thanks for watching our show this week. If you want to learn more about the Cowgirl Chicks, go check out our website at cowgirlchicks.com. I know, they keep hitting me in the face. It's so hard to talk and I'm like, ping, ping, ping. <laughs> we got two heroes in the rodeo business, Walt Garrison and... <laughs> There you go. This is Choppers. This is my baby. Um, I had the, my first pig's name was Chop Chop and he's pretty much named after him. I would love to be a Dallas Cowboy football player. I can do the, high, the hymen. <laughs> that one. I think we put way too much cream cheese because it was nasty. And Terry said it was the worst stuff he'd ever put in his mouth and called it a turd. But you know what? Better look next time. And we will be in Walt Garrison's cookbook. Mark my word, Terry. We're going to be there. <laughs> wow. Look at that uh, Super Bowl ring. That is incredible. So big. That is a...
unreal. Wow. That was the first one we won. You hold it there first. The Which first one. Yep. Yeah. The very first. That's the original. That's incredible. Ooh, I gotta get, I Which gotta is get real important. Very they important. won several since then, but that was the first one. So. What was it like when you got to? Put it on the first time. Well, you don't get to put, see, they don't have them right after the game. Really? Because they put your name on it, number on it and everything. So you don't actually get them for like a year late. Well, about a half a year later, when you go to training camp wow. the next year, you get a ring. So, what, uh, what does it feel like getting that in the mail? <laughs> uh, no, they don't, <laughs> they don't mail them. They don't mail them. <laughs> I thought we just like,